Laryngula recently featured an article via Oprah Winfrey's highly trained science-based think tank with no less than six radical questions that science cannot solve. Only a few short days later, the first three items have been mysteriously redacted, all three of which were idiotically religious in nature, doubly so because they could all be answered with the slightest effort. Since they are no longer available on the original article, I decided to take a crack at explaining just how preposterous such items are, as well as why the remaining three questions are super fails. First on the list, the stigmata of Padre Pio, who died in 1968. Now, stigmata is an interesting phenomenon, so we'll start there. Here's a popular depiction of the humanoid known colloquially as Jesus of Nazareth hanging from the cross as he nobly sacrificed himself to reverse a decision made by his dad, who was also himself, regarding sin and who goes to heaven. Notice the nail placement in his hands. This is what the bones of the hand look like. This is a significantly cooler picture of human hand bones. Notice that from the wrist through the palm and out to the fingers, there are only long, narrow, parallel bones. Driving a nail through the hand would not support the weight of a person. To be effective, you'd need to travel up the arm until you reach the radius and ulna. Here, between the two long bones of the lower arm, you could secure a human being to a piece of wood and let them hang there in agony for quite some time. So why then would stigmata appear through the palm? And more importantly, if the point of Jesus' sacrifice was to prevent the need for another to stand in his place, why inflict the same torments onto the pious followers in his wake? Since he's dead, we'll just have to conclude that Pio was self-inflicting the wounds. Some accounts suggest he used acid to accomplish this end. But if any contemporary individual claims to have the stigmata, there's a cheap and easy way to verify it. $15 webcam plus constant surveillance by an independent party. Either that or a forensic examination of the wounds post-infliction. Oh, and you can thank science for both video technology and forensics. Question 2. This handsome fellow is Ganesha, the Hindu god of obstacles. I found that a delightful revelation as solving question number two would require only a person of mental faculties equal to or slightly below a chimp, a gallon jug, and an afternoon. A little experimentation could solve this quite handily. It seems the likeliest answer is human credulity and or porous stone and or, say, a hollow cavity which would give the appearance of consumption. Exactly how this is supposed to baffle scientists is quite beyond me. Short of something other than hearsay, it's not even worth considering, much like the Jesus tortilla slash grilled cheese slash pancakes. Question three is the most offensive. This Indonesian mosque is undeniably a beautiful and impressive structure that survived the 2004 tsunami. I want you to take a close look. Marvel at the intricacy of its construction. It was clearly spared by God during that wrathful time. Let me tell you what was not spared on that day. 230,000 people dead, 125,000 people injured, 45,000 missing, another 1.7 million people displaced, billions of dollars in damage to homes, cities, and infrastructure. Yet this particular building survives and it's nothing short of a miracle. Sounds about right to me. No sense worrying about two million people whose lives were lost or destroyed. God wanted to save this one place, so he did. Nice one, God. Question four actually moves closer to the realm of science, but again we find the author one tiny Google search away from the answer. How did the universe begin? The Big Bang. We know about cosmic background radiation. We know about redshift. We know the universe is expanding at an accelerating rate. Extrapolate all these things backwards, and you come to a moment of singularity from which all things commence. Some might say that we don't know what happened before the Big Bang, but don't let that fool you. Time itself is a feature of our universe, and prior to the existence of time, there was no such metric. Question 5 keeps us in deep space only to ask, do aliens exist? And the answer is this. Very, 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 very probably. We know that life exists on at least one planet in the Milky Way galaxy. With hundreds of billions of stars here in the local cluster and another hundred billion galaxies in the rest of the universe, it is all but inevitable that life exists outside of our solar system. However, it is important to draw the distinction between belief that extraterrestrial life exists out there, somewhere in the cosmos, in all likelihood on some lonely island of rock radically different in appearance and character than we here on Earth, and the belief that UFOs done abducted my cousin and stuck weird alien thingies up as pooper. 
it's important because the former is a statistical inevitability and the latter is about as probable as the effectiveness of homeopathy. The final smack in this seemingly unending face palm fest of an article relates to the number of species on planet Earth. This is at best a specious question. There are a lot. We discover new ones all the time. Our definition of a species is refined over time. But just remember, we know that around two million species exist and can reasonably estimate that the total is far greater. This is what's called an ongoing investigation. Maybe it will never end. Maybe it's just a matter of time. All that being said, I have to just conclude with the following. Atheists, skeptics, science lovers, one and all, I fucking love you. I love the plethora of scathing comments and heaps of scorn piled all over this steaming brick. I love how many people are outraged at this dumbed-down and pathetic stab at being provocative. I love that while the credulous, flippant, and small-thinking folk of the world open their mouths wide to the glistening spoonful of BS that Oprah.com wants to feed them, that we skeptics, we freethinkers, swat it away and say, No, Oprah, we don't want your softness, your lack of critical thinking, or your parade of quacks. We say no to that nonsense, and yes to truth. My only regret is that our dissent is lost amidst the clapping and seal barking of the credulous majority. Until next time, brothers and sisters, Buddha smile upon you all.